Laura Jen, you ready? Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Hello, everyone. As part of this year's virtual celebration of Art in the Round, the Arc Baltimore is pleased to offer this kickoff event to share all the ways you can enjoy this year's artwork and continue your support of the artists and the ARC. Please be patient with us. We're trying some new technology here today so that we can get uh, this event out to multiple audiences. So just bear with us if we have any technical uh, dif difficulties throughout. My name's Chris Norline, and I will serve as the technical support for our co-chairs, Jen Brandenburg and Laura Ward. Welcome to everyone joining us, and Laura, take it away. We are so sorry we can't be together in person this year, but the art must go on and the artists still have so much beautiful artwork to share with us. They deserve to have their work shown and purchased. We have a great deal happening with this year's event, but since it's really all about the artists and their artwork, we want to share a short video highlighting one of the artists who has participated in Art in the Round for a number of years. Let's take a look at Nadia Strausball. her color to create her flower. I know, I know. Different color, okay? Mm -hmm. It's going to be like this, okay? Like that. Oh. And then one. I love it. Rainbow. Rainbow. I mean rainbow. Rainbow flowers. Hi, my name is Nadia. I'm from Romania and I'm, I came to this country 20 years ago and I'm still learning how to speak English. Now I'm doing good. I like the paint. I do the, the mosaic, the paint, all kinds of stuff. The sewing, the singing, the modeling, make more ties, um, make a mask. Since I'm pretty close, fashion. I like dress nice with fashion and I like to do with hair. I love all kinds of creative. Um, I like to create things. And I gotta use my talent. And she will feel my talent so so people can understand me. Her specialty is making bow ties. She was making all kinds of bow ties for adults. And we wanted to have her own little website because she loved making bow ties. Christmas time, we, we made a bow tie for the animal shelter and we donated 300 bow ties to the animal shelter. I made a bow tie for the animals to my deal. It was my deal to make a bow tie for the animals because I, I was adopted from Romania. And I want the animals to get adopted. I want them to look nice with the bow tie so they can get adopted. And a nice family who can support them and feed them and have a nice life. And I felt so sorry for the animal for being abused. I want them to have a better life. So we start making out of the fabric that somebody donated, we start making masks to give and to help the people 
Especially since nobody else cared. Said it. Jesus. So we we gave way over, way over. Nine thousand men, more men, close to two thousand men. Man. And the mirror too. The mirror it was plain. So is the mirror. Took a lot of work, but it's worth it. And this looks so pretty. And all greenies, they look rich. <laughs> It's an artist. I love it the way I did it. Just thinking my mind with the making. It's something create my what I have in my mind. Something idea. Every time I'm thinking my mind with the making, I make things. That's all. And we're back. Fantastic. I'm so happy to hear about what motivates Nadia. And I love that she made all those photo ties for the SBCA. It's wonderful she uses her talent to give back to the community. The next thing we want to show you tonight is how you can view the artwork this year. We have a virtual gallery that you can visit to tour the 50 pieces of selected art. You have the option of either allowing the gallery to take you on a tour to see every piece on exhibit, or you can take a tour and meander wherever you like, just like in a real gallery. We'd like to showcase the gallery so you'll see how easy it is to navigate. Plus, you'll get a sneak peek at some of this year's artwork. Now, the man behind the curtain, our own Mr. Chris Norline, is going to take over our screen and show us the gallery. All right, so welcome to our virtual Art in the Round gallery. When you click into the link uh, that's available on our um, uh, Art in the Round website page, um, you'll get a prompt that says enter exhibition or start guided tour. I would highly recommend doing the guided tour first. Uh, it's the easiest for, for someone to navigate. Um, and when you click in to start the guided tour, it'll take you obviously to our opening poster. Um, and, and every few seconds, it will push over to the next piece of art. Um, at any point of the tour, if you want to pause it, you can click up here. And then when you click on the artwork, you can access information about the artist, um, the dimensions, and as well as the medium uh, that they used, uh, or the medium of the artwork. Um, if you want to go back into, um, or if, if you want to navigate on your own at your own pace, you can hit next and it'll take you through. And the great thing about it, if you get a little sneak peek of the artwork, you'll also see the pieces that were selected by our curators. Um, six pieces were selected um, and they'll be discussed at the event next week. We're really excited to hear from them. We'll tell you a little bit more later on in the event. Um, if, if you've already taken the guided tour, um, you can close out of that and you can navigate on your own. And it's really cool. There are two full rooms of artwork. We have 50 pieces for you to see and explore. If you get close to one, you just click on it and it'll take you in and tell you a little bit more about the artist. And again, click the uh, information button at the top. Um, one last thing to show you, um, when you click out of the, um, the detail view, um, and I'm trying to find exactly where that is. Um, Oh, here we go. Uh, list of works. So if you've gone through and you, and you said, oh, I really want to see that one particular piece, I click that list of works and I can scroll through and it'll take you right to that particular piece. So let's say, for example, I wanted to see Justin Valenti's Nala. I click on that and it takes you to the area uh, in the gallery so you can view more information about it. So we're really excited to bring this uh, gallery to all of you. Um, it's obviously not as it's less than, than ideal than, what, than seeing everything in person, but we think this is the next best thing um, uh, for you to see all of this incredible artwork from so many amazing artists. Um, so that is basically it. Um, and I will turn it back over to Laura. Chris, that really is a terrific way to see all the right, all of the art and you're right, it's amazing. To get a link to the art gallery to view it for yourself, go to the ARC website and there's a link to Art in the Round there where you'll find the gallery and everything else about the event and how to bid. Speaking of which, if you want to bid, you need to register for Handbit. 
Directions for renewing with Hambit or setting up for the first time are all on our website. Just go to www.thearcbaltimore.org and click on the Art and Around banner on the homepage. I promise you that bidding with Hambit is fun and easy, plus you'll get notifications if you've been outbid so you have a chance to bid higher. Now, the last thing we want to share with you is about the ARC's Color Our World campaign. We'd like to show you a short video on what's been happening with the ARC Baltimore during COVID and tell you what the Color Our World campaign can mean for you. Here's the video. COVID has challenged all of us. The ARC Baltimore has not been spared but has responded and continues to do so. What has been gray and foreboding on our worst days is also on better days filled with color and light and hope as we forge ahead in this new normal, keeping people safe, healthy, and filling our spirits where we can. At the outset of the pandemic, almost immediately, given the number of people who attend who have underlying medical conditions, the ARC closed its day centers Normally, most of the 250 plus people we support in 120 homes across Baltimore are out during the day. Suddenly, all of them were home and 24 seven supports were needed. We increased staffing in the homes from 300 to 470. The staff give reassurance, provide physical care when needed, engage in activities and keep homes sanitized and safe. Many who receive employment support in the community were deemed essential workers at hospitals, grocery stores, and even nursing homes. We coached on safety, provided masks, and gave guidance. The community responded, sewing and donating masks from far and near. We combed suppliers for surgical masks, face shields, gowns, booties, and hand sanitizer. The training room was converted to our own PPE distribution center. New protocols followed guidance from the CDC and the local health departments with isolation periods and PPE for all in a home with an exposure or a threat for COVID. As weeks have turned into months, new safety routines are now normal and programming continues to evolve. Outreach was intense from the start and continues to all those who were displaced from day programs or their jobs. Day programs now offer a growing array of virtual classes for employment skills development, to learn computers, or to enjoy art, theater, or musicals. Porch visits came next to further reach those for whom remote classes and virtual meetings just don't work. COVID's impact on the ARC is most importantly about the people that we support, but the economic cost has been severe as well. Hazard pay and retention bonuses were critical to keep staffing secured especially in those early days when fears were running high. We have purchased tens of thousands of dollars of PPE and cleaning supplies so that staff and people support it get what they need. Program closures mean normal funding isn't there. Fundraising events were postponed or canceled and now are going virtual. Thankfully, new grants have closed some of the gap and many families and contributors have given very generously. Which brings us to now. While COVID has brought many gray and gloomy days, there's much beauty and color around us. That's what Art in the Round is celebrating this year. Art creating continues. Whether privately in one's home or in an online art class, friends are enjoying each other at home, on porches and at work, by phone, by Zoom, and are feeling less isolated. Our community and organization are strong and we will get through this crisis. But we need your help now. People with developmental disabilities are continuing to live their best lives possible. Some days are gray, and some days are bright with color. The ARC has to stay strong, so we're there when this is all over. Art in the Round is but a small sample of the beautiful colors that people with disabilities offer to our world. Your contribution to Art in the Round and our Color Our World campaign is for now, in this great time of urgency, and for beyond for a more beautiful world where we are all valued for our talents and unique abilities. On behalf of the ARC Baltimore team, thank you.
Come on. <laughs> there we go. Now we're back. Jay. I hope everyone enjoyed the video. We would love everyone watching to get involved and respond to what the ARC is doing during this very difficult time. Sorry. <laughs> Once again, all it takes is to visit to the ARC website and click on Art in the Round for everything that we are offering. You will find a link to the Color Our World campaign, and there are two ways to participate. You can make a contribution to the campaign, and we are truly grateful for that. And you can also use that web page to set up your own fundraiser for the ARC. You can set any goal you like, whether that's $200 or $2,000 or $20,000. This is a crowdfunding effort that we really hope that you will choose to be a part of. Not only that, but you can also set up your own page honoring one of 25 artists from our Artist Hall of Fame. We selected some of our favorite artists who have been in art and around for years, and you can easily download their bio and photograph to your personal page. Now Chris will demonstrate how this is done. So as you can see on the Color Our World page below um, an instructional video that we highly recommend you watch. It's about three minutes long, and that will walk you through how to um, set up your fundraiser from start to finish. Plus, you can email us below if you have any particular technical questions, and we'll make sure we get those um, uh, taken care of. Just below that, you'll see about 24 Hall of Fame artists. You'll see either a, a picture of them in their artwork or just their artwork but it also includes a bio. So all you need to do is right click, save image as, and then um, you will insert that photo into your own page. And you can also copy and paste um, the, the text for each of the artists. It's really that simple. Um, and I'll let Laura uh, finish up and tell you about how to customize your own page. Yes, Chris, I love that you can customize your page however you like. Um, and add details that mean are meaningful to you. You have from now until the end of the month to set up your page and share with your family and friends and ask them to join you in supporting the Art Baltimore. We promise it's simple and we even have eager interns from Towson University who are more than happy to help you. Lastly, we want to give a really big shout out to our title sponsor, Scientific Plant Service. Scientific Plant Service always brings out an enthusiastic bunch of art lovers to the event and they walk away with a few pieces as well. We hope we'll see them again in person next year, but thanks to Scientific for sticking through us with this virtual event. And thanks so much to everyone for joining us tonight. Be sure to visit the ARC website for links to all we talked about and plan to join us next week, same time, same place, to hear from our art curators on their selections of this year's amazing artwork. We couldn't be more excited about this this particular event for Art in the Round. Um, joining us next week for Curator Night are some amazing leaders from the Baltimore area art world. Um, from left to right, we have Jeffrey Kent, artist and artistic director from the Peel Center. George Sissel, who is a good friend to the Art Baltimore, a, a, a um, incredible volunteer. He's the curator in residence emeritus at MICA. Asma Naim is the chief curator at the Baltimore Museum of Art. Gary Vekin is the retired director of the Walters Art Museum. Amy Eva Reich is the executive director of the Goya Contemporary Gallery. And Kara uh, Ober is the founding editor of Be More Art. I'm really excited to hear from the curators. I love the pieces they selected last year. Well, that's it, everyone. Thank you again for joining us this evening.